what I, I already know what song you can play for the shorts, though. It's the end of the world as we know it. Um, oh, I don't even 12, have a beer. 12. <laughs> and I do. Look at that. <laughs> Shit. Well, welcome back. Episode 12, the big one, too. I'm your host, Chris. As always, my co-host, David. Only 12 people have walked on the moon so far. Now let's make some poor choices. I got my spatula here. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's your week 12 beer, sir? My week 12 beer is a smoothie style sour ale. So I guess like a sour milkshake <laughs> with pineapple, mango, and passion fruit. It's called Prison Pals. Well, for a guy who doesn't like pineapple, you've had it two weeks in a row now. Well, did I have pineapple last week? Two out of last three. I'm trying to figure out who brews this. Oh, Prison Pals Brewing Company. Let me see the I can. guess it's just called Smoothie Series. Oh, that's pretty cool. Well, and it even gives a, if you can see that, like a smooth or a, a sour rating on the back. Oh. Relatively sourness. Relative sourness. I wonder how that'll match up to that. Um, remember that pineapple soft serve I had a few weeks ago? Yeah. What did you uh, rate that one? That was good. That was like in the eights, like eight and a half, I think. Ooh, that looks like you just ate a bunch it, of... Look at, let me see the color of that. It's thick, dude. Yeah. Let me see it. Yeah, that looks like some orange juice. It kind of tastes like there's peach in it. It tastes like a, like a mango peach smoothie, but it says mm. pineapple mango passion fruit. It's good. So smoothie as in, is it like have like that... Like it's a little bit creamy. It's, yeah, it's thicker. Okay. What was okay. that? Uh, what was that word you used a couple weeks ago? Viscous. Yeah, the viscosity is <laughs> a little higher than normal beer. <laughs> don't ask me that, to spell it, but it's good. I like, got you. <laughs> it must be like fresh fruit in here. I don't know if you can see, but there's like little black things floating around. That's COVID. Oh, fuck COVID. <laughs> uh, it's good. It's good. Yeah, what are you giving it? I give it a, I give it an eight. Oh yeah, that's a great score. I would, I would go like an eight and a half. Yeah, but I think because of the thickness of it, two's probably capped out. I can't drink ten of them. Okay, I got here since 1999 a Kentucky Vanilla Barrel Cream Ale, uh, cream ale with natural flavors aged in oak bourbon barrels, brewed by. Lexington Brewing and Distilling Company. I'll, I'll I'll give you a guess of where they brew out of. That's got to be Kentucky. That's out of Kentucky. Let's see what we get. I didn't even see where this one was out of. St. Doral. That's got to be close. Holy shit. What's it taste like? Cream soda beer. Can't oh, go wrong with that. My God. Well... Are we gonna sure. are we gonna set a new record? I'm mm. at a nine. I'm at a nine five. A nine five. I'm at a nine five. Woo. I'm sad. I only bought six of them. Well, oh. you know where the store is at. Oh, oh, oh! It's so I'm waiting good. for you to. I'm waiting for you to snorkel <laughs> it and grab another one. <laughs> Can you explain to people who don't doesn't don't know doesn't don't know what that means? <laughs> a snorkel is basically beer bonging a bottle. Or like shotgunning so, a bottle. Yeah. yeah it's yeah, How I does one either. snorkel? It's interchangeable, I guess. So you snorkel by taking... Oh man, I wish I would have prepared for this. I would have grabbed a straw and a lighter. Basically, you take a straw, and you can't bend it because that cuts off airflow. So you take a lighter to it just for a second or two, and then you bend it. If you have a bendy bend straw, it. it'll work yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah, or you could just take a lighter to it, right? bend it, it'll... Fuse it together, I guess, without blocking off the airflow. And then you stick it in the bottle. You put the whole bottle in your mouth with the bent part of the straw out of your mouth. And then you just chug. 
And while you're chugging, the air comes into the straw, pushes it up into the bottom of the bottle, and forces it down your throat. Love it. Shout out to Jack at Coconuts for teaching us that one. Yeah. That was a that was a hell of a night. Yeah. <laughs> it was so, Which which drink. one? <laughs> the, the the night we discovered it cuz it was every drink was uh let's Yeah, let's snorkel this one. Let's, let's snorkel, snorkel this, this as if it yeah. would have had like any kind of different taste or or anything. All right, ordering bottled stuff we would never order just so we could snorkel it. Yeah. 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 Cool. Well, I wanted to start start out with a, a fallout discussion cuz we had both watched that. However, before we get into that, I wanted to start us out on our, our new segment of Ask Reddit. So each oh. episode we'll we'll hit each other with a an Ask Reddit question. Which we sorta of did last week, but I didn't preface it as a yeah. Ask Reddit question. So we'll officially start that this week since yeah. I forgot. I was preoccupied by red hair. Actually, let's let's get into that first before we get into this. So we okay. uh, we we followed up with with Mr. Eric on that to see how <laughs> to see how our uh, our pickup lines went. And oh we, yeah, yeah. And yeah. What did he say? Uh, he said that she was tough talked, to. Yeah, they talked for a bit, but he gave up because she was impossible to set anything up with. Impossible to set anything up with, right? Yeah, and you know he went he went with the uh, fishing for compliments pitch so i asked if he had given her any more and he had said no nah, i told her we could have more she could have more when we met in person so clearly that's never gonna happen do you think it's because he lives in bfe which for those who don't know what that is it's bumfuck egypt meaning middle of nowhere um, i think it's because he has red hair <laughs> God damn. eric i didn't say that all right if you're if and when you're listening to this i didn't say that he thinks it i say it <laughs> you know how it works <laughs> Well, I, I've been scrolling through to, to preface our um, our new segment of the Ask Reddit and just to kind of get some combos out of it. I've been just on the, you know, what's hot page, just kind of scrolling through to see what catches my eye. And I kind of like what I just found. And it's what currently non-flying animal would be most lethal if given the ability to fly? Which current non-flying animal would be most lethal? My first thought was a bear. Yeah, my first thought was an elephant. The number one answer on here is a hippo. Okay, so just another heavy animal. So hippo is probably more accurate because that's that's more like an all around thing. My thought was with the elephant. Just imagine that it could how fly big and it could the just wings like drop would have to be and then though. go right back up. The wings of an elephant or a hippo would have to be like like the size of like a dragon. Like yeah. the wings would have to be huge to get that two tons easy off the ground yeah would be crazy so would it would that just be like a like a what's the word i'm looking for here flying hippopotamus Nah, or well hippo or elephant would that just be like so i guess the opposite of inanimate would be animate would that just be like an animate boeing 747 <laughs> yeah That's in like, a sense yeah <laughs> just like flying around i could just Come down to the lake and grab some fish, or it's like a bow and going down and just grabbing, grabbing some pike and just fucking taking just back off, scooping up. Um, yeah. Other responses I see are um, it says cats, goodbye birds. Cats what? Um, it said cats. Period. Goodbye birds. Mm. Well, Wolves so yeah, lethal they, to birds, but not yeah, like to what anything else? Anything else? Yeah. yeah, squirrels, rats. You know, they'd be just a bird basically. Um, yeah, you heard of cat because, birds? Cat birds? Is that like cat dog? No, cat oh, birds. Cat, a cat bird. Yeah. They like dive bomb cats? Oh, no. Yeah, so there's, I don't know. I'm sure they're probably not actually called cat birds, but there's these these birds. I was over at Buddy's house one time, and his cat was like out in the driveway under his mom's car. Just, and I was like, why does she just chill under there? Just like, watch. And the cat came out, and the second the cat came out, the birds would like dive bomb the cat. It was fucking so wild. I, I've seen like or heard of like cat birds are just kind of they're just kind of like oh that's a cat bird like a general like eh, it's just a cat bird is that like an insult uh it's more like it's like it's not any species to write home about eh, it's just a cat bird <laughs> <laughs> never, never fucking heard of that in my life yeah just a little cat bird okay um so <clears throat> according to Google a cat bird is several unrelated groups. So it's more than one species of bird. Several unrelated groups of songbirds are called catbirds because of their 
wailing calls, which resemble a cat's meowing. Hmm. Okay, so maybe we just made up the other cat bird thing. We were like, oh, they're dive bombing cats. Go on, a cat bird. Cat bird. <laughs> um, so cat bird's just like Joe Schmo cat, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Joe Schmo cat. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. I like that. Okay. Uh, what ima- were some of the ima- other answers? Imagine a squadron of wolves flying at you during a full moon. Because, <laughs> you know, they hunt in packs. Well, why didn't they say, why'd they call it a squadron? And not a pack. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Hmm. How about venomous snakes? That would just, that'd be like weird with it. <laughs> so I'm so maybe, th- maybe they have multiple sets of wings so their body can stay vertical or uh, horizontal as opposed yeah. to like like there's just this hail this tail dangling and this body up here and it's just yeah. like going across the sky there's so many more variables that go into something like that like how fast do they fly how agile like do they just like fucking right. scatter around like a like a fly or is it like a bird where they're more you know they got to take wider turns <laughs> and they can't jolt as quickly well the next answer was a chicken or an ostrich <laughs> And the ostrich had said they're very fast on their feet and they're real dicks to humans. <laughs> if they could fly, we'd all be in trouble. <laughs> Just flying assholes. Uh, we got the bears. Uh, definitely tigers, uh, sharks, um, cassowar. Nah, because they, they still got to live in water, right? So they could come out for a little bit, but. What's a cassowary? 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 Yes. Mm-hmm. Sounds like a Google question. It's all cassowary. Okay. Uh oh, it's like a oh, what the fuck? It's like a emu, but like with a blue head. Oh, uh, like yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no B like in that word. Thing up here, no. Casso wari. Maybe I'm thinking of chupacabra. <laughs> you know what else would be word. dangerous is a, a komodo dragon. You know they're like yeah, they're like top five most deadly animals in existence. Okay. So my ask Reddit was at the. End of the world, what song should play during humanity's credits? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I definitely got that. And the, and the number one was REM. It's the end of the world. It's the end of the world it. Yeah. as we know it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, what else couple, is on there? A couple others I saw were Rick Astley. Never going to give you up. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. Uh, there was Billy Joel, We Didn't Start the Fire. We Didn't Start the Fire. Yeah, yeah, that's good. There was the final countdown. The final count. I'm just gonna sing all these songs for you guys. Do it. Good, good. That way I don't have to play them, and we don't get copyrighted. It'll be perfect. <laughs> there was the Bee Gees, "Staying Alive." Ooh, 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 ooh. Staying alive, staying. Alive. That's the song you're supposed to sing when you're giving someone uh, CPR, right? Yes. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm not. Uh, My certification is uh, expired. Staying alive. Like, like that beat is yeah. like as how fast you're supposed to go. That sounds right. Okay. Uh there was closing time by semi sonic closing time uh, no. okay there was africa by toto oh that might be a winner i'm not going to sing that one cuz i can't i can't <laughs> get that high but yeah yeah the, this person said the seinfeld theme song oh just the bass playing yeah 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 that'd be good another person said the entire shrek movie <laughs> Oh, those are like onions. <laughs> the, from there, from there, it was just a bunch of repeating. Those were the only ones worth yeah. mentioning. So I figured now, I'd ask you what you thought it should be. Yeah, I have I mean, my, my answer, whether my a song first or thought a theme or was easily it's the end of the world as we know it. And yeah. I want to say it is Armageddon, the Bruce Willis movie, um, where like they're playing that song like in the beginning of the movie, just as like. You know, that's the music they're listening to on the rig that they work right. on. It's, it's something like that. Um, just as like a little bit of foreshadowing for for the movie. I for what the movie's about. You, for what you probably already knew going into the movie. I'm pretty sure it's Armageddon. It might be Deep Impact, but it, it's one of the it's one of those world ending something from space is coming to crush us. Yeah. Right. OK, well, what's your yours? comments about that are foreshadowing for another thing that we'll talk about. Uh, so that's what you're going with, R.E.M.? Oh, yeah. That was easily the first thing I, I thought of was it's the end of the world as we know it. Yeah. I don't know if I, I if I had a first thing I thought of, but after reading reading through all these, the one thing that popped in my, into my mind was uh, that noise or sound or theme that plays when you die in Mario. It's like... <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Either that or like the... 
wasted from like GTA. Yeah, yeah, that's a good <laughs> yeah, yeah. one. Uh-huh. Just something something from a video game that when you die, I was yeah. like, that would be... Well, I think that or the wasted have to be... Can you name another? Like an iconic one? Like you just died? Maybe James Bond, like Goldeneye, when the blood comes down on your face yeah. when you're dying? Is there anything that... Something... Pl- I think it's just like some random 007 theme, though. I don't think it's anything like specific. Like it is, but I don't, maybe not only for that part. Yeah, it's a good point. It's something, um, you're right. It's something James Bond themed that the, plays. The first thing that comes to mind is I used to play this like snowboarding game on the computer where you would like. Oh, I thought you were going to say SSX Tricky or something. Nah, like. nope. It's way more, way more DOS-esque than that. Like no, okay. you were like Playing a guy going down like there. a, yeah, like a 2D <laughs> hill and like every once in a while, like an, an abominable snowman oh, oh. looking thing. Yeah, yeah. Because um, you had to get past the trees, yeah. and there was little jumps that you would. And go I don't over. know if that was even like a game you bought, or if that came <sighs> with Microsoft or what. Damn, you're taking me back to like 1996 all over again. But when you die in that, there's like a dude that comes on screen. And he's like, "Game over, man. Game over." <laughs> <laughs> he's already pulled over. He can't pull over any farther. <laughs> he's already gamed over. Ah, <laughs> uh, well. One thing you didn't quit your job to watch was Fallout. No, but so I did watch that. it. Uh, yeah. Okay. So to preface it, um, it came out on a Thursday, which is typically one of my days off, typically. And I was like, oh, it's Fallout. Forgot what's coming out. Cool. Let me check it out. Um, and eight and a half, nine hours later, I'd watched the entire series in a day. Um, so I've seen every episode, um, but it's been since it released, since I watched it. So it's been a couple weeks now. Um, loved it. How yeah. long did it take you to watch it? Uh, it was one of those, let me, let me start it at bedtime. If I don't like it, I'm going to pass out. If I like it, probably be up till one. If I can force myself to right. sleep, I'll finish it another time. So started it. I think I got an episode and a half, maybe, maybe two in. And I was like, okay, this is good. And then yeah. it was laying in bed with Kayla and she was into it because typically if she doesn't like something I'll put on as like a, a bedtime watch she's out in like a minute and I look over like at the end of because they're like hour episodes I look over at the end yeah. and she's like like all right cool we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna watch this one together I guess so when you said that she enjoyed it and watched it I was actually kind of shocked because I didn't think she'd be into um she got she gave it she gave it a chance I know what you're gonna say well I was gonna say the gore of it first off I don't so think she I was think into gory stuff. She's not, and I and I think the gore happened so late that after she was she already, was already hooked. So she was like, mm, "Okay." And then came the dog stuff. The dog, yep. And th- yeah. I, and I think because that was I had brought all these things up to her, and hey, I listen, think, this is going to happen. I thought, yeah, no, 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 no. I'm saying like during the watch because at one point we were watching it downstairs. She didn't feel good, so she went up, laid in bed, and watched it, and I was still watching it downstairs. Right, and. I was like, I didn't think you'd keep what because we we went to watch it the next day, and I was like, I'm here, and she's like, Oh, I'm also there. I'm like, Oh, I didn't think you were going to keep watching it after after the dog got stabbed. I wonder what got her hooked so easily. Just the I think the like the sci fi ness of it, and it was just very well written, well acted. It's, it's a different just, take yeah. on people that aren't familiar with the video game. It's a it's a really good different take on right. like apocalypse and end of yeah. the world. Because it's the people really like different. us want to watch it because we have played the game. So, like, we're looking right. for similarities. And then the people that haven't are looking for, like, are not looking for anything, I guess. They're just like, oh, it's an end-of-the-world scenario. Because I feel like there's not a lot – there's a lot of end-of-the-world stuff out there, but it's not all great. So, it's, it's like, ah, eh, just typical. This is, like you said, like a different take on the end-of-the-world yeah. kind of um, aspect. It's – so so she 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 really liked it. So what happened? Yeah. When so so she was stuff she happened? was hooked. Uh, puppy stuff happened. That's when I was like, I'm here. She was like, I'm also there. I was like, I didn't think you keep watching it after you know the dog. But I think the dog was resurrected so shortly after it happened. It was very quick where they yeah. introduced another. So dog. She was yeah. like, okay, okay, yeah. Um, but I will say, yeah, so I don't so, yeah, so them, spoilers on it because it's, we can, we can give them away. Fuck it. Okay. Well, <laughs> I will say when he, he locked the dog in the, um, Nuka Cola cooler, I was kind of like, Oh, did the, did the, did the puppy. Yeah. Oh my goodness. But we all knew, we all knew. He'd be I fine. didn't, 
I knew it would be fine. They weren't just going to lead the dog. But in. I was still like, ah, oh, this asshole. Until, because I didn't realize that it had that little hole in the bottom for the soda to come out. So once I saw that, I was like, okay, you're still an asshole, but at least you're not, like, killing the dog. Yeah. But then I was like, well, what if he's got to eat? So, But then by that time, he was already rescued. Ever see a trailer? Or did you ever hear any announcements about it? Or are you just like, oh, this show's out? I think I, I think I heard something at some point, and I think it didn't really, like, cross my mind because Twisted Metal was not long before that. And that was a great show. Okay. I think I read that like it was good, but it wasn't like spectacular. That was great. No, it was great. It was so entertaining. Like mm-hmm. I was not bored once in that show. Okay. Maybe that's it's non, you, I don't it's know. Maybe non-stop. maybe maybe whatever I read was someone that hadn't played games or whatever it was was like, Yeah, it's good, but it's like meh. So I figured Fallout. I only played the one game. Like I'm not gonna make it a priority. And then I started seeing stuff pop up on social media and this and that. Right. You had said something about it. And then I saw something about being most closely related to Fallout 4. And I was like, well, that's the only one I ever played. And I played it like religiously for like a month. Mm-hmm. So I was like, let's give it a shot. And then like 20 minutes in, it was game over. It was a game over. Yeah. Um, I saw the trailer and it was this. They showed the like most of the scene of. Um, when she like first gets to, where is she? She's in Philly. Um, and the ghoul's there. She being like, who? The main character? Yeah. Yeah. What's her name? Okay. Um, uh, Lucy. Lucy gets, and she's like, you know, the ghoul has just shot all these dudes and she's like, I need you to stop now. And he's like, oh, really? And as soon as he started talking and I went, I know that voice. This is during the trailer, and I looked it up, and it's Walter Goggins, and I was I love Walter Goggins. He is one of my favorite actors. He's just such a good actor. Um, yeah. So as soon as I knew that was him under all that makeup, I was like, oh, I, I don't care how I'm good or bad it, yeah. the show is. Walter's in it. I'm watching I'm it. I'm yeah, about yeah. it. Yeah, I'm about it. And and like I said, I, I put it on the first day, and the first episode played, and just like you just said, it was, like, yeah. it was game over. Like, hmm. sat, sat down to watch it eating your breakfast, and you're like, I guess I'm going to watch it eating lunch and dinner, too. It it went on till about seven p.m. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So great segue into, I guess the first of a few things I had about him being in Philly. Um, I read something about his how like every bullet was like destroyed people, and they said that that was like an Easter egg slash ode to the bloody mess perk from Fallout. Um, could be. Yeah, but my uh, my question about that was or. Towards the end of the show, like in the last, I think it was the last episode, where all of the Brotherhood of Steel dudes come in and mm-hmm. to get him. And he's like, um, says something about how back when he wore the suit, there was this spot like right here that like wasn't oh, yeah. protected. Right, right, right. Like basically saying like, I could fucking destroy you right now if I want to. When he was in Philly, why didn't he just shoot there when he was shooting Maximus? Like... They made this like big old thing fight scene out of it. He could have just shot him right there if he knew about it. Yep, sure could have. <laughs> so was is that a plot hole or was he just fucking with them or? Um, I'm gonna say it's a plot hole. I'm gonna say that they they made this aware that he knew this and then they didn't hmm. have him act on it during that scene because that was one of the main characters in the scene. Yeah. So they didn't want to kill him right off. Yeah. Okay. Do you want well, some plot holes? Yeah, if you got plot asking? holes, go ahead and go into that, and then I'll spit out my other random shit I got. Um, okay, how did the fridge save Maximus? Was he hanging out in the fridge all day in fear of bombs, or did he get in the fridge once the bomb went off, in which case that would have been too late? Did they mention how long he was in there? No, they just show him exiting the fridge, and then there's a Brotherhood of Steel in his armor there yeah. to, to greet him. How long were they there after the, the bombs bomb? dropped? Yeah. Not how know. how quickly were they there? I don't know. Hmm. Okay, I like it. How did Hank get a hold of a nuke and single handedly take down the NCR, or even with limited assistance from Vault Thirty One? Was there anyone ever in Vault Thirty One? Uh, the brain. That's what you mean by limited the, assistance. The the Roomba. Yeah, yeah. he was there. <laughs> okay. Um, which brings me to um the next one, which was um. How did Vault 32's inhabitants die 
and who cleaned up Vault 32. There's clearly no one able to do this from Vault 31 as the overseer there could not even get past a <laughs> fallen mop. <laughs> well, you did just call him a Roomba, so we know how the vault was vacuumed. Right. Um, so did, did so that only was, Vault 33's overseer go and do it all herself? Like, how'd they, how'd they do that? So, a couple things. Yes, maybe. Uh, Overnight? Maybe. Two, how did the Raiders get in there to begin with? So that's on my list. Okay. So, however they got in there... So it's, she might know people on the outside. Hold on. I that's got, a good point. I got, that's I got a good more. Point. Uh, as far as what happened in 32, I looked it up, and I wasn't happy with the answer I got because the answer or the website or article or whatever I read said that it was, like, not explicitly stated, but that it was enough. And that was um, Mouse Utopia Experiment or something like that, basically where they, like, give them all the food and amenities and this and that that they could possibly want to the point where they are so happy and they overpopulate and they just consume all the resources and then eventually start killing and eating each other for survival. And when I read that, I was like, I don't remember that being talked about yeah. at all. Sorry. So that's apparently what happened and apparently it was stated, but not. I don't remember that either. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. So um, that's apparently what happened. As far as the cleaning, that's a great question. Okay. And I don't know why she would have someone. Yeah, I don't know. What about, uh, let's see. How did Lucy not remember being outside the vault at age six? Kids can remember stuff from a, from the age six. Also, what about the older kids? Surely they could remember? Remember her being outside? Yeah. Maybe they didn't know. It could be, but how does she not remember? With that little uh, pen thing from Men in Black? <laughs> Whoa, did what you see that? that? What? What is that? <laughs> what just happened, David? <laughs> what the fuck was that? Dave, How do you do that? What just happened? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> is, is that your beta your, app? I don't know. It's got to be because I ain't. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? That was great with the flag in the background, though. It's the end <laughs> of the world. <laughs> All right. Anyways, before we were interrupted by fireworks and thumbs up and stuff. Um, that was, yeah. Yeah. I don't I don't know how you don't remember something like that from when you're six years old. My, my point was like, I don't know, fucking fuck this thing out again. Uh, one of those little pens for men in black. That's that's oh, my only. Yeah. Just okay. Make it free, yeah. yeah. Um, do you want a couple more? Yeah, why not? Okay. Um, what happened to the plot regarding the water filter slash chip that is damaged, and why not then just move everyone to Vault Thirty Two in the meantime? Yeah, that was a that was another like, thing I saw. Nothing looking it, stuff. Nothing up. happened with that. Yeah. Apparently, it was more of a like a reference. I never played. I only played four. I don't remember if it said it was a. No, I get it, but w w they introduced it and then just. Nope. Yeah, nothing was ever said about nothing, it again. Nothing yeah. happened. Nothing happened. Yeah, I don't know. Um, what about, what about, what was the point of the whole Hank kidnapping plot from the perspective of the NCR? They could literally have gotten the information from him in the vault. Maybe he wouldn't have give it, given it to them in the vault? Like, yeah, That's like perhaps. It, if, you, if you want the, the launch codes for nukes to the U.S., are you going to... Right, go in the White House and try to get her. You're gonna. That's a good point. Snatch his ass and take him somewhere else and be like, "Look, motherfucker, we're actually gonna kill you." What about how did the Vault 31 overseer get caught behind the mop? And who even put it there? There's no one in Vault 31. Only the brain. What? Well, so how did he get there? Good point. It maybe. Well, did he put himself there? Where's his? No. No. Because you would have well, had a, maybe. a brainless body carrying in the. Brain. Yeah, so somebody somebody in one of those tubes probably. Maybe they just forgot to put away the mop before <laughs> before they got it their tube. They they, they spilled their Nuka Cola and oh, they yeah. said, Let me mop this up. <laughs> one too many um stim packs. I don't know. How did Hank not know something was wrong with Volt thirty two? Only inhabitants from Volt thirty one are made overseers, yet here was an unknown person put in charge of Volt thirty two. Who's the unknown uh Mm -hmm. Well, maybe they used a fake name. 
or they you just assume the identity of could be i feel like it's it's less that than um like what happened like there had to be a, a big lapse in the amount of time of communication like he might not have known what the overseer looked like but they had said that whatever happened here happened a long time ago like they had to be right. trying to communicate with them for however long to just get left on red like <laughs> <laughs> we should yeah, probably go yeah, check yeah. that out. That's a good point. Or maybe I, they knew and they were just like, man, we don't care. So I've got a couple things. Okay. The first one is, so Moldaver was so against uh, vault entire ideology of let's do this. But how did she stay alive all those years? So we talked about that, or not, or, not podcast, but I'm pretty sure they mentioned that she was cryo frozen. I'm pretty sure they mentioned that. Where would she, she have been cryoed? 31. And she just left? And then she got uncryoed and left. Who would have uncryoed her? The brain. The, the overseer. With what? Limbs or extremities? Well, he could probably just plug into something and say, hey. Because he's the only one in there with all these tubes, so he's the only one who yeah. could let them out. Well, I so figured he, he would have just communicated with ability. one of the other overseers and they would have come in and... Whatever. Okay. Well, that makes yeah. sense. I don't remember them ever saying I'm that. Pretty sure they mentioned that she was cryoed. Yeah. Okay. So just, just uh, this one's an observation. Okay. Um, so sex is so casual, and Lucy talks to her cousin. It's so funny. Talks it's to so her funny. cousin about having sex as if yeah. they have had sex, but then Lucy says uh-huh. it's not sustainable. So are all the vault dwellers lined up with breeders and or committing incestual acts well when it gets to be what 200 and how many years later yeah i guess at, at some point but what, how no, many people, my, my how many people were at, down there in the vault at that well in their vault yeah um it, let's just let's just say a base of 50 but as the years go on the probability of having incest if you start with a base of 50 is going to decrease because you're going to have more people having babies and relationships that aren't related to each other, that, that grows, right. that, that tree well, grows as opposed to the tree of we're all related. So that's if, that's if they have multiple children, because if no. you go the other way, you're going to have 50 people, 25 so, so, couples, so you have fi- 25 couples. So you have therefore 12 25 kids. children. Yeah. Yeah. 25 couples. So 25 children who are then going to get together and that's going to be 12 and a half couples. You're going to have 12 and a half children. So if there's multiple children, then yes. Okay. I see what you mean. Does that make sense? Is yeah. my math adding up there? God, Regardless, he was so that's... Safe. He was so, so safe. The, <laughs> Sorry. Point point being, is everybody fucking their cousin? Is it just like a Alabama vault down there? You know what and you call your... You know what you call your your cousin who is also your husband? Mom. Your cousband. Cousin. <laughs> It sounds like the the sexual relations are Alabama esque, and it sounds like the marital relations are like I don't know Egypt, India, India. So like they're fucking their cousins and they're marrying people that they're told to marry. Is that like standard? I think that's mm, mm, when it's such a limited amount of people. I'm gonna say yes. So you can fuck your cousin, just don't reproduce with your cousin. I don't make the rules. Do you remember the part where the ghoul said? Thou shalt not be sidetracked by bullshit every goddamn time. I don't. Okay. What's the scene? What do we? I don't remember. I was gonna look it up. It, was, it was, like, was it a prequel? Was it a prequel scene, that. or was it like a no? It was, already a ghoul. No, he was. Yeah, it might have been like. Was it when he went to and, that? Was it when he went to that? Um, when he went to the the farm with the father and the son and the daughter. Was it that scene? The father and son who are farming like bullets and that kind of stuff out in the farm. And he goes in oh, and, he shoots, where he, and he shoots where he's like, son. I killed your brother. Yeah, yeah. He'd do the right thing. You okay? Chet says the whole opening the vault door for Lucy thing didn't sit too well with counsel. So I guess I'm not gatekeeper anymore. It's the only way I can oh. get my father back. He gives me another thought. Go ahead. You can't treat people like this. The ghoul says, yeah, why is that? Uh, then someone says because of the golden rule. And then the ghoul says the wasteland's got its own golden rule. Thou shalt, mm-hmm. thou shalt get sidetracked by bullshit every goddamn time. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that was a uh, what it's 
I guess, referred to as an art, literature, movie, whatever, is a fourth wall breaking joke about all the side quest players have to do in the game. Oh, that's pretty good, actually. Now that you say it like that, yeah. that's good. So I thought that was pretty clever. That's really clever. Now you say it. I never thought of it like that. So you know what my favorite scene was? It's not the best scene in the show, but it was the it was the scene that made me like literally like drop my jaw like uh what? <laughs> was when he just like straight up like pulled out a knife, just cut her finger off. Yeah. Was like I was I was like uh, just like that. He was like, Oh, eye for an eye, tip for tat. Yeah. He grabbed her hand and just went and I was no, like, no lead up, no very anticlimactic. Just, <laughs> yeah. this is mine now. I was, and she was just like, oh, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I love this show. <laughs> it was very, <laughs> and it was very nonchalant. It wasn't like, yeah. He was like, now we're even. Yeah, we're, we're good. All right, she let's keep was walking. like, this hurts, but okay, you're right. One of the other Easter egg ish things was the. We'll call them the launch codes to get the uh, the cold fusion particle. The code was one zero one zero nine seven, okay, and that's a nod to the release date of the original Fallout game, which was October tenth, nineteen ninety seven. Oh, that's pretty cool. Ninety yeah. seven was that a PC game? It had to have been. You know, probably because the last thing I have is that Fallout Four sales are up seventy five hundred percent. And the thing I read said that the majority of them are PC downloads. So I would imagine that it's probably the same people that played it back in 97 going, I want to play this again. But even when you see season two, the Vegas season, it's just going to blow your mind. It's going to be so good. As long I as I wait. still understand what's going on, because every scene it felt like well, in, in this one, I was like, oh, I remember that. Or like yeah, it referenced but, something that like sparked a memory. But thinking about it, your your wife, who's n- never would even come close to playing a Fallout game, really yeah. enjoyed the show. It's not right. going to make it unenjoyable. You're still going to yeah, know what's true. going on. You're going to know the characters. You're going to know I just, the story. I feel like like that. FOMO. You might you might like not I'm get the details. Out. Yeah, I'm like that's man, correct. I want yeah. I want to be in on that. Yeah, so you're going to get that. Um, you can you can just YouTube a video of like. Yeah, I'm not a big fan. You know, of summary of playthrough stuff. No, 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 no. Just like summary of New Vegas game. Like, so you can get like the plot and the story and the character. Yeah, but it's it's, it's little like you know. Easter egg stuff that I'm like, ah, I like that. So the, so the show felt, well, no, the show looked, I will say it looked like Fallout 4. Um, as far as just like a lot of the, just a lot, a lot of the decorations and the, and the aesthetic and, and just like the, what's the word I'm looking for here? The feng shui. The yeah the uh, environment sets a hey, the sets <laughs> um just looked like they came out of Fallout Four just just it just did but right it, the music too the music played a lot of fall it gave you very heavy Fallout yeah. Four vibes a lot of those fifties music but the best part was when they would play all those like like nice nonchalant fifties forties songs and like there's dudes heads getting chopped off yeah guts getting splown out while they're Made it's a little like more slow enjoyable. motion yeah i think i laughed the hardest um during i was probably episode two um when maximus's knight encountered that bear yeah that was wasn't and he's that just, he so he's so i saw him and i was like i, that's, I recognize uh, that guy what the fuck is his name so he was from um he's in a million things and he's like he's a sports a, analyst yeah um, yeah, that's he was the guy. in a show I used to watch all it's the Michael time. Michael Rappaport, um, that's him, right? No. I'm going to go with yes. But when he's 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 running, he's going, oh, fuck, 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 <laughs> fuck. I was dying laughing. Oh, it is Michael Rappaport. Yeah, Would yeah. you look at that? <laughs> yeah, so I know him from, hold on, I got to find it now. That dude was been in everything. That dude's on ESPN. He was in Prison Break. Like, yeah, but he had, no, 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 he had another show, like his own show. He's in Deep Blue Sea. He's in Justified. How about that? Ah, I can't find it. Whatever. <laughs> so what would your vault experiment be if you ran a vault? Just one vault or like like in the show where it's like. Well, yeah, like, like three, I guess. It seems like out of the three, it's always one that does whatever. However you want to do it. What would your experiment be? That's a good question. Um, 
Because you can go like cynical, you can go just something Seems to help like the vault. Mostly went cynical. Mm, cynical. Um, I feel like it, it kind of has to be cynical because it's like at least the way they perceive it, they're getting out of there at some point. So they're not going to conduct an experiment that they can do in you know the world. They're like, hey, we're down here. We have an opportunity. Let's try some shit. Yeah. Um, mm, that's tough. Um, no, I'd, I'd probably like, like like have them all make sports teams, and I'd I'd bet on the winner and and like Vault Thirty One's team against Vault Thirty Two's. Do some do some longest know. yard thing. No, they they'd be like four square or something, like something that they could play in the vault. You know, like <laughs> badminton or something. Is that an experiment or is that just like a tournament? <laughs> yeah, it's just a tournament. Yeah, you're right. All right. Well, okay. then I would have an experiment. Um, you could do like uh, do like the way everybody wants to see the Olympics. Just like take a couple sports and give everyone mass amounts of steroids and see how much better they compete or like what how much they shatter world records and things like that. Yeah. It's experimental, it's, I guess. It's, it's tough. Maybe, um, yeah, you know what? I got, I got almost nothing. All right. We can, we can progress. Talking about fallout stuff. Let's go with some, um, end of the world scenarios. One, I have a few just to list off and two, which do you think is either most likely to happen or more likely to happen before the other happens? Cause some of these are inevitable. Some of these are more conspiracy. Um, okay. But out of my list, um, so the first one being a scorched earth because eventually the sun is going to now this is millions and billions of years away, but eventually is going to get to the point where the solar flares get so intense that the earth is just going to burn and, right. and crisp up and, and be nothing left. An AI apocalypse, uh, meaning, you know, the, the AI did, you know, the Arnold Schwarzeneggers take over and Skynet takes over and, and we're out of control of our entire infrastructure and internet and all that is just not controlled by us anymore right zombies obviously um a global pandemic so any kind of covid sickness um some crazy flu uh fever what, whatever it is uh, some kind of global pandemic or last one being um you know global volcanoes and or you know super volcanoes the yellowstones and, and and all the the giant volcanoes that can take over continents on one eruption kind of thing and that so what do you what do you think um is the most likely to happen first and which one do you think will be the so one I'm ranking them one to five? Oh, i forgot one um something from space hits earth so an asteroid or a meteor or something comes crashing down yeah yeah one to six or yeah what do you think i mean do you have probabilities nope oh Okay. <laughs> just 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 kind of what do you what do you what do you think is one the most likeliest to happen um and then two which one do you think will happen even if it's not the most likeliest one to happen. So we're going statistically and then opinionated. Opinionated. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think uh the first one would be pandemic statistically. Yep. I think the second one would be an AI takeover. Mhm. Mm I think the third one would be a volcanic eruption. Okay. Uh, I think the fourth one would be something from space, either an alien or asteroid. Uh, the fifth one would be the sun, some kind of solar flare. And I would say the last one statistically would be zombies. I think I agree with your list 100%. Yeah. Uh, as far as what will happen first, in my opinion... Ah, uh, I want to say, am I only allowed to choose out of those? Yeah, we'll keep it. We'll keep it those. I would say out of those, yeah. I want to say AI, but I also want to think that humanity is smart enough to quit before they get to that point. Yeah. So um, that's, that's the scary part is you think we are, but yeah. what if we're not? Uh I guess I have to go with that one because I don't think any of the other ones are going to happen. I think COVID, that's funny that you brought that up, a pandemic. <laughs> I think COVID was way overblown as far as its effect on society. Uh, it never should have got to the ridiculousness that it did. So being that it, it brought down 
the entire stock market. It put, you know, millionaires into not being able to afford their homes. It turned billionaires into people that work nine to fives. All of that blown out of proportion as it was, I don't think a, a pandemic will ever destroy us. Hmm. You don't think a, a, a bacteria or a, something like that will be the end of humanity? I think it could. I don't think it will. And not by end of like all humans die, but I mean, you know, civilization and governments. To the and, point where we got to go in a vault? Yeah, you know, to the point where you're back into <laughs> hunting and gathering. I mean, you know, there's But you can't no even more... do it. If that's the case, though, you can't even do that because you don't know if what you're hunting and gathering has said virus. Yeah, I mean, that would kind of get weaned out through throughout the, the process. You okay. Learn by, learn by trial. But yeah. I think that one's up there, to be honest. I think, I think, I think it's up there. But if you think about, think and I'm about, not, like I said, I'm not saying the end of the race. I'm just saying the end of governments and, well, the, you know, I think no matter what happens as far as taking out humanity, the government's going to be the last thing to go. So if you take out the government, you're taking out humanity. If that makes sense, I'm saying that humans will still continue and be alive. Post. Yeah, and I'm and I'm saying. The last humans that will be left alive will be the government. Mm. Those I in power, for, those in office. I think first to go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I would I would think it's between the two. I, I don't know enough about volcanic activity to speak to that. Um, likewise with solar flares. I don't think anything um, coming from Earth. I think we, I don't know if you watched that three-body problem show. Basically, we I, know I, enough I, about spatial awareness, I guess to know that if something was coming, we would have enough time to probably still be fucked anyway, but know about it, and we would know. Uh, you know what? It, you, the the best part about that is don't look up. That movie is yeah. very... Because um, it's, it's something that is so big and out of our control. But we were told that we have enough information on it that we would know. And we'll have to we'll have to do a space episode because I've been having a lot of like weird maybe it's been since I watched that three body problem. There's been a lot of like space related shit going on in my head. Like questions and like how do we know that? So we'll have to maybe next episode we'll do like a a space kind of Yeah, we'll get Tyson on and Okay. You know, we'll we'll talk about it. <clears throat> I didn't know you had his number. We don't we don't want answers, we just want to talk about our thoughts. Good, yeah. good well, content's not having the answers to everybody's questions. It's debating no, it, the it, answers to it's, their questions. It's the what ifs. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll uh, have to do that. But yeah, so I don't, I mean, I don't know enough about that either, but I would think that we, you know, we know how far away fucking Pluto is. We should be able to tell if an asteroid's headed our way. Well, we can, we can tell, but if it's something that's just out of our control, it's going to hit us regardless. So. Yeah, that's true. And then aliens, that's, you know, maybe they just want to say what's up. We can get Bruce Willis to go drill a hole in it and drop a nuke and split it in two, and then it'll miss Earth, and we're good. Maybe. And then and Josh zombies, Arnett I just I think that's just a, and, yeah. That was it's what? good. It's a good. It's a good movie and story. Uh, all right. Well, speaking of movies, I want you to rank these five end of the world movies according to their IMDb score. Okay, gonna rank them from best to worst. Best to worst. Got it. Armageddon. Mm-hmm. World War Z, mm -hmm. A Quiet Place, mm -hmm. The Fifth Element, mm -hmm. I Am Legend. I am going to say that A Quiet Place is number one. Okay. I'm going to go with World War Z, number two. Okay. I'm going to go with Fifth Element, Armageddon, I Am Legend. I love Fifth Element. That is one of the best movies ever made. It as is you, so good. As you should, because that's actually number one on the list. Damn it. At, Damn it. At a 7.6. Second on the list was A Quiet Place at 7.5. Okay. Third on the list is I Am Legend at 7.2. Absolutely not. Fourth on the list is World War Z at 7.0. You know, I should have guessed Armageddon was last. And Armageddon Just, last at yeah. 6.7. I get it. I get it. I can hear you think just a tiny bit. I, I get it. I get it. You I get it? why that's the last. So if the world was ending. Ending how? Do, doesn't matter. In Say in a week. And you had to go into a fallout shelter. Oh, okay. What are, just, you know, based on that whole 
I gotta so go into scenario, a vault. Yeah, you're going into a vault. What five mm. things are you taking with you? See, it'd be a lot easier for me to pick five things if I wasn't going into the vault. What would you... You wouldn't have to pick anything because you would just have everything until you died. <laughs> no, I mean, like, if I were to, like, live. But you like, might it was like, live. Like a Walking Dead scenario. That's what I mean. Like, like here's your... Zombies are taking over. What are you taking with you? Those top five things. But if it's like nuclear fallout, that's a little different. Yeah, like things, it could be entertainment. It can be sentimental. It could be any number of things. Into a vault. Hmm. Like I bring my gat. Okay. With a box of ammo and a couple clips. That's, just, that's, just three, that. that's three things. No, that's all one. My gun and my ammo. Okay, so you're, uh, you're, you're carrying case. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, just because then I could just like own the vault if I really wanted to, and be like, "Hey, you're mine." Well, now. I'm I'm sure that they've probably got security. Mm, okay, yeah, I'm gonna bring that. Okay. Um, I'd probably bring none of this stuff would really work. <laughs> um, because <laughs> I was thinking like you could bring your phone. You don't have service, but you still have all your games and everything on oh, there. There's a generator, right? Yeah, so I mean, I'd, there's I'd not going to be I'd, internet or I'd, anything like that. I'd bring my PlayStation Five. Okay. Like with with pre-downloaded games, so like I could like game for yeah. You also have to add to that list then a uh, television, a TV. Yeah. I uh, like a 95 incher. If I'm if it's, you know, my top 5, I'm going to go as big as I can. Yeah, 95 inch TV. All right. So we got gun and associated <laughs> accoutrement and then a PlayStation, uh, PlayStation and a TV. TV. Okay. And I got two more? Two more. Hmm. I would bring, I'd probably bring a, I'd probably bring like a big like K bar or like Bowie knife or like something, something big, a big blade, big fixed blade. Okay. Why? Um, you know, protection. You got a gun for that. Yeah. Anything you need for utility purposes, they'll probably already have down there. But if I needed to leave the vault for any reason, I've got that on me too. Okay. And lastly, I would bring a. Do I have electric down there? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would hope so. You already. You already oh yeah, I got brought my PlayStation. your PlayStation, your TV. Hmm. I would bring a one hundred one zero 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 thousand one hundred thousand piece puzzle. <laughs> no more than that. I feel like that'll take you like <laughs> yeah. twenty years, and then you're gonna be like, That's, yeah, I wish I had. And then I'll be like. Well, I got my knife and my gun. I'm just going to leave. <laughs> when you're like 60, you're going to take take on the wasteland as a fucking cripple. You know what I might bring instead is like those little things that you put on the side of corn so you don't burn your hands. For corn or for something else? <laughs> yeah, just for corn. Okay. For growing corn. Okay. <laughs> Maybe not like a harvester to make sure you can grow corn or? I just want to burn my fingies. You just want to bring your fingies. Okay. <laughs> no, I don't want to burn my fingies. <laughs> I'm oddly okay with that. <laughs> I, I would have I would have had a much easier answer if it was like a you're outside it wasn't going into a vault. That's a much tougher question. Okay, so like, if you're if you're the world's ending, you're and I'm outside you're booking full speed to the vault, doors closed. But I can't make it. Yeah, yeah. What do you uh, wish you had? Samurai sword, twenty two rifle, no, uh this, a, thing, a things that no this, this this isn't you could have anything <laughs> in the world. This is things that you own currently. I, yeah, I got a samurai sword. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's on my dresser right now. <laughs> uh, I'll send you a picture when we're done. Okay. <laughs> you can put it in the podcast. <laughs> so samurai sword, twenty two rifle, uh, a life straw for water. Is that one of those like filter things? Yeah, you just suck into a stream and it's got built in filters so everything's clean coming out of it. So it, like it filters out radiation? Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Um, so it's the only things that I have. Yes. Okay. So those three, a, my knife. So a fixed blade, a big fixed blade. That's four. So knife, sword, gun. Yeah. And you want a knife and a sword. Yeah. Okay. I can't, I can't skin a deer with a sword. I mean, I could, but. Okay. Um, knife, gun, sword, water, and all the first aid that I own. Like all my kits couple, together. A couple band-aids and some peroxide. I got a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you say that like you 
run third shift at a hospital or something. <laughs> I got no, a lot of I, I got have, a lot of things. Cuz I have like the first aid bundle that's like um it's got like the emergency blankets and it's got water tablets and it's got all that and then I also have like your normal f- first aid stuff that's like yeah yeah all that stuff needle and thread and waterproof matches and then band-aids and peroxide and Tylenol and I feel fishing like, line and hook and I feel like you should have taken a different approach to that with the thought of take things that would be more scarce and valuable and then you could like take my PlayStation well, no, not if you're in the wasteland, but then you could like <laughs> barter those things for a lot of band aids and Tylenol. Not if nobody, not if like, like if nobody has them, then if I'm the only one with them, then I'm glad I brought them. Yeah. I feel like that puts a target on your back. Yeah. Well, they got to get through my, my samurai sword <laughs> and my gun first. <laughs> oh, Jesus. That's great. That's great. Yeah, I'll, send you, I'll send you that picture because it's a great sword. I love that sword. <laughs> I feel like I have no idea what to expect. It's Michonne's sword from The Walking Dead. Like a prop? No, it's a real sword. It's as sharp as shit. Like, it was $250. Like, it's a real sword, but it's... Why did you... Pay? You didn't even keep watching it after Glenn died. So, funny story. When I got my PlayStation 5, there's a game called Ghost of Tsushima, which is like a samurai game. And I got so deep into it, and I was like, I just want to hold a sword in my hand. And then once I want... On to Amazon and the websites, it was like, yeah, you can get these like $30 fake samurai swords just to put on your wall. And I was like, nah, I want something that's like, it would cut like a real sword. And then they had one that was like, oh, this is also that plus it's designed from Michonne from The Walking Dead. I was like, fuck yeah. I might have had a few beers that night. Yeah. And uh, I ordered it and it's on my shelf right now. I'll go get it. You know, I'm going to go get, go it. get it. We got to see that. All right, so <laughs> it's a sword. <laughs> there it is for you, visual peeps, non audio peoples holding the sword in its scabber. Right? I go whooshing. <laughs> it's, it's a non joke. This will cut your head off, sword. <laughs> next time you come over you'll have to bring it and we'll have to uh make some content i'll like throw watermelons at you and you'll have to like slice them as they're coming at you so I, it's it's sharp as shit <laughs> i've already at least like we'll call like you with the, like call you the fruit ninja yeah so uh there it is well speaking of the world ending can you guess the top five most likely ways the world will end according to sciencenews.com? I feel like some of the ones I already said are probably on there. Like if it's sciencenews.com, volcanoes is probably on there, right? Nope. Uh, scorched earth, like solar flares is on there? Nope. What? Uh, something from space hitting earth? Asteroid is number nine on the list. AI? AI is number six. Seven on the list. Zombies? Not on the list. Nuclear fallout slash, yeah, war. Nuclear war. Nuclear war is number two. Pandemic. Pandemic's number three. Political unrest? No, not on the list. One could, it's relative to one, I guess, in a way. Don't think too much into that. I'm talking out of my ass on that one a little bit. Um, That's the only ways the world can end. That's think it. of think of Al Gore. What? <laughs> think of Al Gore, like the vice president. Yep. What was he? What was he big on? Oh, global warming slash climate change. Climate change. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. number one. So there's four and five. Neither of which you'll probably get. Number four is social media, which is, is like going to end end the world. Yeah, indirectly. That was my sort of related to political unrest and then i'm not sure what number five is i tried looking it up but it would take me a little while uh number five is complexities and stability so complexities and stabilities is talking about like ecosystems so the failure overpopulation failure of the ecosystem 
Uh, early studies suggest the simple ecosystems were less stable than complex ones, but later studies came to opposite conclusions. Confusion arose because of the many different meanings of complexity and stability. Many of the possibility, possibilities, questions about the relationship between stability, complexity, and not asked. Those that have yielded a variety of answers. So basically the ecosystem failing. Okay. Interesting. All right, David, I got some rapid fire bar trivia night questions for you. Are you ready for that? I'm ready for it. All right, let's do it. Who were known as the Fab Four? Um, Ash Ketchum, Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Squirtle. <laughs> answer we're looking for is the Beatles. <laughs> um, which Arthur... All right, rewind, cut that. Which author wrote Jurassic Park? Steven Spielberg. No, nope. okay. It's Michael Creighton. How many times has Kim Kardashian been married? Once. Three. Which young artist recently claimed five Grammys at the 2020 Grammy Awards? Taylor Swift. Looking for Billie Eilish. What is the highest grossing video game franchise to date? Tetris. Looking for Mario. I guess Tetris what, isn't a franchise, huh? <laughs> what U.S. state drinks the most alcohol per person? Wisconsin. Looking for Nevada. In China, if you order white tea, what do you get? Milk. That's a good answer. Oh, uh, you get boiled water. <laughs> <laughs> Who was everyone's first friend on the MySpace platform? Tom. Nice. Which royal couple recently asked to be relieved of their duties? Megan and Harry. Nice. Um, who has the most followers on Instagram as of April 2020? Athlete. That's your hint. Current? Yeah. Sport? Soccer. Ronaldo. Mm -hmm. Which celebrity is launching her beauty line with Sephora in June? No. Next Chloe. It was Selena Gomez. Mm. Um, what? No. I'm not asking that. Don't ask. Um, who starred as Mr. Rogers in the film It's a Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood? Mr. Roger. No, the actor. Yeah, that's all I got. That's a, <laughs> Tom, that's Tom Hanks. Um, what year was Prince George born? 19. Mm -hmm. How old is he? No. No. <laughs> <Don't worry. laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I thought about it. 1967. Uh, we were looking for 2013. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and you said, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. uh, finish this famous queen line. Is this the real life or am I dreaming? Is this the real life or is this make believe? Oh, is this is correct. Is this the real life or is this just the Holocaust? Fantasy is the word we were looking for. Mm. Okay. Holocaust. <laughs> <laughs> plot, plot, fizz, fizz. Was an advertising slogan for what? Pepsi. That's uh, Alka Seltzer. Uh, how, nah, you, nah, that's easy. Uh, what year was McDonald's founded? Nineteen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Hit me with the mm hmm. You're gonna be like, no, eighteen forty two. <laughs> no, you're good there. Uh, nineteen forty eight. Well, that's close. Nineteen forty. Mm. Finish this popular Britney Spears line. Oops, I did it again. I played with your heart. Got lost in the game. Oh, baby, oh, baby, baby. baby. <laughs> nice. Uh, which body parts Wait, continue to grow throughout? What's the oh. next line? I did again. Play with your heart. Got lost in the game. Oh, baby, baby. Oops. I think I'm in love. Hey, you did it. That sent from above. I'm not, I'm not that, that innocent. innocent. Hey. That, that came out of nowhere. I'm surprised I got that. Uh, yeah, I'm um, very surprised you got that. <laughs> I'm proud of you. Which which potty parts continue to grow throughout your lifetime? There's two of them. Think of like an old person. It's like big, it's big on them. Like your grandpa. He has big this and big that. We're going <laughs> like... <laughs> we're going... So I don't think you're going here, but technically skin is correct. Okay, yeah, but we're not going that. And yeah. also technically hair is correct. But yeah, that I'm going to go with... Ears. Mm -hmm. And what's the other one? Nose. Yep, that's correct. Okay. So I, got, I national, got four of two. Yeah. What's the national animal of Canada? Moose. That's a great guess. It's actually the beaver. On average, how many grapes does it take to make a bottle of wine? 600. That's a good guess. It's 400. Mm. 400. Uh, which film was the first non-English language film to win an Oscar for Best Picture? 
mm. for best what? Best picture. So it won like best movie of the year. Uh, I don't remember what. Pretty it, sure you've seen it. I don't remember what it's called. It's that What's Asian it one when yeah when they got that like maid trapped in their basement or some yep. shit. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So Parasite. It is yeah, okay. Yeah. I was gonna say Parasite, mm-hmm. but I thought I saw some new movie that was similar called Parasite, but I guess it was that one. All right, well, I think I got like 10% of those right, so let me give you some. <laughs> According to a new survey, what is the most common item to be kept in a junk drawer? Batteries. Rubber bands. Okay. I'm not mad at my answer, though. A new study of American households has found that the average man can do this thing while only 10% of women can. Fart quietly. Whistle. So, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Butthole whistle. <laughs> Which is the only city in the world to host the Summer Olympics three times? Summer. Uh, I'm going to say Paris. You sound like you're from? Jamaica? London. Oh. Hmm. Okay. What is banned in one in five schools but legal in all 50 states? Um, prostitution. Peanuts slash peanut butter. Hmm. It's banned in one in five schools? Allergies, I guess. Over 90% of average American households say they don't remember when they last cleaned this household item in their home. Uh, The oven? Like in in the oven? The vacuum cleaner. Who cleans their vacuum cleaner? You just empty it. Okay. Go ahead. Which grocery store item has the third largest markup? Milk? Close. Want one more guess? Water? No. it's, It's closer to milk? Milk is the other ingredient in this meal. It's a meal, not a, not like a one nah, thing you would buy? Nah. It's one thing you would buy, but you don't eat it without milk. Cookies. Mm. A cereal. There you go. Cereal. Okay. Uh, I need like general trivia, <clears throat> not this nonsense. <laughs> what is this? You gave me bullshit. <laughs> I, I, I literally went to 150 plus fun bar trivia questions. That's what I went to. Oh, I Googled That's impossible what... trivia questions. No, no, no. no see, that that's loaded. <laughs> Just go to just go to bar trivia, and that's what I need. G- give me the bar trivia. These this is my favorite segment when we do these. I love this bullshit knowledge stuff. Just do like you know, a hundred f- fun bar trivia questions with your friends, or see these are too easy. Well, just skip what over. alcohol like some of mine is were... typically used to make a margarita? Yeah, oh, keep scrolling. Did you get like a big list? Uh, yeah, I went to a different one. Hold on. <laughs> It's it's stupid. Uh, Okay, fuck it. We'll give it a shot. What is a group of unicorns known as? Flock? A shimmer. (laughs) Okay. Well, they're not real. Where where were fortune cookies invented? Korea. Japan. Mm, That was my next guess. What is the fear of fun called? FOMO? I don't don't know. That's a feeling I'm missing out. Um, It's 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 funophobia. Funophobia. Uh, that, That was an option, but it's cheerophobia. Oh, okay. Which yeah. country invented ice cream? China. Why do you say that so? That's easy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I I know a little bit about a lot of things. <laughs> where, where, ooh, in what country is it illegal to frown at cows? I don't know, the Netherlands, the USA. Which ancient? Disagree. <laughs> which ancient people invented the toothbrush? Romans. Egyptians. Mm. That seemed too obvious. Okay. What is the national animal of Scotland? I'll give you a clue. Uh, it's a dog, about right? A, about a minute ago, you said they weren't real. No, oh, unicorn? <laughs> it's their national animal? Apparently. <laughs> okay. What did Alfred Hitchcock have a fear of? Birds? Close. As close as you can get. Bats? Nope. Think further down the line of birds. Uh, further down the line of birds? Like breakfast. Like they fly? Breakfast? Breakfast. <laughs> Birds and breakfast. What would you think of? Eggs. Eggs. What? That's weird. Okay. Why don't esports kids do well in strip clubs? Because they have no life or dicks or money. They throw <laughs> <laughs> They throw coins expecting extra lives, not extra lap dances. Fuck esports. Get a life and, and a, a job. Bitches. We're out. All right, name this movie. Did you say steak? No, I said mistake. Well, see, now you got me all excited. Ooh. 
Your hint is Rob Schneider is the main actor. Rob Schneider. Animal something. Oh, that's a good guess. Um, no, it was Deuce Bigelow, Male Gigolo. Mm. It said stop recording failed. 